Welcome to another edition of 42 straight years in on my crackhead update. I drove up on a live oak at the gym where my old lady go. She got a membership there. And uh, I was standing outside the car waiting on her to come out of the gym. And when she came out, this black lady walked up to her and asked her, say, uh, can I use your phone? Now she has a iPhone 12 Max Pro. I think I think it costs about 1400 bucks. And she handed she got to unlock it in order for the lady to use it. So she unlocked the phone and handed it to her. And the lady looked at the phone and said, Man, I've been looking everywhere for my phone. Man, I knew I was going to find my phone. My old lady looked at her. She said, where did you get this phone from? My old lady, she she practiced uh, Muay Thai. That's the uh, martial arts in Thailand. Man, she kicked her upside her head and she caught her on the way down. She broke her jaw, and she we parked at a 7-Eleven, so they got cameras everywhere. Ain't needed me and her trying to leave the scene because they'll get my license plate, and the detectives will be at my house in, in one hour. And uh, she was trying to talk, but her, but her jaw is broke. She was trying to say, uh, I was just playing. Now, she was thinking... Cause my old lady is white and she gonna just dry take her phone. But they got a policy, a lot of the youngsters, if you got an expensive phone, they'll ask they'll request to use your phone when you unlock it and you hand it to them, they'll take out running with your phone. I've seen them do that uh, in the West End. But uh, we stayed there until the police came because she had to go to, they call EMS. And the cops talked to her, and I and I pointed out, well, that camera is right there. You can go look at the camera and see exactly what happened. And the people in the gym, they looking at the whole incident, so they came out and said, uh, we didn't actually hear what was being said, but she handed her a phone, and uh, she probably didn't want to give it back to her, and uh, she got assaulted. And she was just thinking because she was white, she was just going to dry, take her phone from her. Now, I don't know if she's a drug addict, but she got the characteristic of a drug addict. Uh, she went to Parkland with a, with a broke jaw. She didn't fracture it. She broke it. And uh, sometimes you can't let the sweet taste fool you. That's my crackhead update. And uh, I'm going to go over to the Styles unit in Bo located in Beaumont, Texas. Uh, that's the unit that I was released from. At the present time, they've basically been on lockdown ever since uh, the pandemic. They, would let them, they let them up, I think it was uh, Tuesday, they locked back down Friday. They've had over 15 deaths at this unit. They, the food service department is running out of food. They complain is uh, the main uh, prison commissary where all the food is housed at for the at regions is in, located in Huntsville and trucks are not bringing the food in. So at breakfast time yesterday, they had uh, a biscuit, and a peanut butter sandwich. No fruit, no cereal, no eggs, no nothing. Now, they have received a lot of PPE equipment, but they would not pass it out to the inmates. And on top of that, none of the guards wants to come to work <coughs> because it's a high uh, incident of guards getting COVID-19. And the only way the inmates can get it is either through visitation or the guards themselves. Now it's hard in hell to
to practice social distancing inside of a prison. The style unit housed approximately 2,900 inmates, 512 in administrative segregation, 12 buildings. The old guys don't count. They are all single cell. Now, in general population, if they were to feed child to practice social distancing, and the old guys had to line up in single file, six feet apart, they start feeding breakfast at 3 o'clock in the morning. They probably would finish breakfast around 10 or 11 that morning. Then they got to start on the dinner. So it would take all day and until the next day just to feed uh, a normal child, which Texas prison feed uh, three times a day. Now they've got PP equipment in. They got the real mask, the plastic ones. They got the gowns and all that. They got it stored in a warehouse out at the old metal fair building. They're not passing it out to inmates. And the inmates dying at flies. Now this prison houses a lot of inmates who are HIV. The reason they are housed at this prison is because it's close to the main prison hospital in Galveston. In case they have an emergency, they can get those guys to the prison hospital. Now, it's over a thousand inmates there with HIV and full-blown AIDS and hepatitis and tuberculosis. Now, the other 1,900, well, excluding the 500 that are in administrative segregation, so you're dealing with about 1,400 inmates out of 2,900 who, is, uh, who don't have infectious disease. Now these people, according to a COVID-19 protocol, they are in the highly susceptible class of, of getting COVID-19. They've been on lockdown basically all year since this pandemic started. Now in the description, I'm going to include the warden's phone number. The warden is Calvin Tucker. He's the senior warden. I knew this warden when he was a regular guard at the East Ham unit. He is the senior warden now. And I include his phone number. I include the phone number of the Styles unit in the description. So you people want to assist these inmates? Start calling where they can pass out this PPE equipment and make can cut down on uh, on the COVID-19 infections at this prison. Because it, it's had the highest extent of guards that have died from COVID-19. And just at this one prison, 15 inmates have died. The total amount of inmates have died in Texas prison since the pandemic started, is over 165. Now, I had a subscriber, Tim K. He uh, made a comment. Is What are some of the things we as society could or should be doing to help our fellow citizens when they are released. Number one, the main pro, the main uh, thing you guys need is housing. You know, if, even though they have halfway houses, there's never enough bed space at a halfway house. And a lot of guys don't have good family uh, connections, so they don't have a family a loved one to be paroled to the house. Or they have a loved one who do don't who do no longer want to deal with that guy. He don't want to deal with his family. It's a two way street. Now me if I had control or resource to help these guys, I would pay for I would give them a six month voucher at an apartment complex. Six months we pay up your rent. Uh, 
guys been incarcerated a long term, I make it mandatory where they must attend a class to learn how to use a smartphone and a laptop because everything is online now. How you going to apply for a job application? I apply for a job when you got to complete the application online. Very few companies have paper applications. You must do it online. You can go there to, to get a job. But they're going to tell you, do it online. Some of them have a computer right there for you to do it in the HR. But if you don't know how to use a computer, they're not. They going to think you're from another planet. You don't know how to log on a computer when they got kids know how to log on a computer. And here's a grown man don't even know the first thing about a computer. I would make that mandatory. Uh, I would give a guy a stipend every month. X amount of dollars. I can't right off the top of my head come up with a dollar amount. But I would give you six months rent free. No bills paid. Everything is provided for. To just to reduce the recidivity rate and possibly reduce crime. Because if you don't have food, you already is a street dude. When you come out of prison, you're not afraid no more. You're definitely not afraid. You're not afraid of law enforcement. You're not afraid of no jail. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know the routine. So you're not afraid. You can take a passive guy and put him inside of a maximum, maximum security institution and turn him into a mass murderer. It's easy to do. Because he'll become desensitized to violence. He's going to be around some tough guys. Or you can put a fake gangster in there. Everybody's a gangster until they run into a real gangster and you find out you're not gangster at all. All the things you think about this person will actually do and have did it in the past. It's hard the first time. It's easy the second time. Uh, I would I would lay out a uh, I would I would lay out a pathway where these guys can actually make it. So you won't have no excuses. So if you fail, it all will be on you. I would give a guy a six month head start. Give him a stipend every month. Naturally, he'll qualify for food stamp because uh, they've changed the law where if you're a drug offender, now you can get food stamp. At one time, if you had a drug conviction, you was exempt from food stamps. But if so many people got drug conviction till they changed that. You can get food stamps with a drug conviction. And uh, I, would, I would lay it out where this guy can actually make it. It'd be all up to him. You got to put some effort into it if you want to stay outside. You can't complain here. Prison got rules. You made it through that. You can make it through this. Now, out here is more variables than inside of a prison. Prison is not necessarily more dangerous than outside. Dallas is a dangerous city. The Styles Unit is way safer than Dallas. I guarantee you that. You're not going to get to have a problem in style unless you bring that problem on yourself. Everybody know what the inmate law is. Guy's going to explain to you what's going on. So when you violate that law, whatever consequences come with that, you brought that on yourself. Well, out here, just like the incident with my old lady this morning, this lady just came from a hard workout. So get in the car. We're going to drive home about five blocks away. She ain't looking for no problem. Here a lady is trying to rob her for a phone. And she got uh, a royal beat down in the process. Out here is way more dangerous. You never know when you pull up to a store or you go to get your car in a parking lot, here's some young clown on the car jack you. You never know when that's going to happen. You also at a 7-Eleven here in Dallas, two young guys tried to rob it when they, they had some young girls with them. They killed a store owner, but he killed one of the old guys with a knife. He stabbed him up with a knife. He died at, at the hospital. And they arrested a 17-year-old and charged him with capital murder. And I think they're looking for the females that were involved. Total ignorant. You ain't going to get no money out of no 7-Eleven. Fast as they get 
50 or 60 dollars, they immediately put it in the safe. You're not getting it in. They'll tell you the safe is time locked. We can't open it. So what you're gonna get out of there? Some cigarettes, uh, some pizza, some beer. You ain't gonna get no money. You just receive the death penalty or life without parole for a petty crime, and you end up killing the guy. When you kill him, you actually kill yourself right along with it. Uh, yesterday, some people were complaining, some of my subscribers, about they didn't see the whole video. I uploaded the whole video. It was 17 minutes and 25 seconds long. I went back and looked at the video. It was all uploaded. I don't know what happened during the uploading process, but a few subscribers was complaining. Also, my old lady accidentally said the video was for kids so when it's for kids they turn off the comment section that was not none of me i do not turn off comments i do not delete comments and i've got a moderator now if you see your comment uh being deleted it's the moderator i do not delete comments if it's ignorant i just don't respond to it uh Uh, as I said earlier, if you want to assist the inmates at the style unit, uh, the telephone number for the prison will be located in the description, in the description box. Call that prison and, uh, and ask the warden what he's going to do about all that PP equipment he got. He's not passing out to inmates. They got cloth masks that were made in the laundry. Come on, man. They got the real face shields that these guys can use, but they won't pass them out to the inmates. Inmates know what came in on that truck because who will unload the truck? When all those 18 wheelers come in, inmates unload it. And naturally, curiosity will kill a cat. They're going to sneak and open one of those boxes because they're looking for something to steal. And they're going to see what's inside of it. If it's valuable stuff, they're going to try to steal it. So they know what's inside of those boxes. Why you got it stored uh, in the warehouse out at Melifab, I do not know. Now, Warden uh, Tucker is a pretty decent guy. Like I said, I knew him when he was a regular guard. He was a pretty decent guy then. So I imagine he's a decent warden. You know, TDC do not like adverse publicity. They do not like nothing to go against them in the media. They try to keep everything in-house. But, uh, and assist these guys out with a couple of telephone calls and it will be appreciated. Uh, Y'all keep your shanks ready. Watch out for these crackheads who want to use your phone trying to snatch it and run. You might have to do one of them fools. Like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.